trailer there. Godfrey and a blocker saved by an attentive Henry Passel. Lindhagen behind the 6x4. Uh oh. Here we go. It's Klotz versus McGradden. Two really big guys right here. McGradden with a couple of shorts and jabs there and throw some crosses in there too. Absolute haymakers. Klotz forced to kind of just lead back, although he's trying to throw some right back at Mr. Brian McGradden. Oh, just exchanging massive blows here. Oh, wow! Just huge connections here. Right at the near half wall by McGradden. We'll just put him against the plexi and go to work. Klotz still throwing haymakers right back at him. And that was a bout! There you go, folks. Brian McGradden is in the building. I think there's only one word to describe that. Wow. That was pretty phenomenal. You can see here other Klotz wanted him, but he was at the end of a shift, and they picked their spots, so they're both coming off the bench, and they had some fireworks there. Fights. We're going to fight. It's Doty against Rosehill. Rosehill firing a couple of big lefts, loses his balance. They're back up, though. This is the fight we were looking forward to once there. Both, both players throwing big right hands. Now onto a left we go. Rosehill goes underneath. Doty comes over the top. Big rights from Doty. Big lefts from Rosehill. Tied up against the boards and the linesman looking to break that one in. Rosehill still throwing punches. Still going. Great fight. Rosal and Doty certainly don't want that one to be over. Linesman in the middle. Referee Dean Smith saying that's enough, that's enough. As Joe Rosal and Jacob Doty go and uh, 
Have a sit down for five. You know, it was a well worth five. That was that was entertaining, and look at the life that's up brought into the building. That was on the scoreboard. Then you see a tussle, Olsen and Hewitt. Hewitt goes in on Olsen here with a bit of a slash and Olsen bumps into Hewitt. So then we see a fight. Sestito is having none of that. He sticks up for his teammate and the pair of them drop their gloves. And here we go. We've got a fight on our hands. Two big tough men trading blows with their rights. Takes its time to get going. I think Sestito smiling there, but Olsen trying to come over the top. Sestito comes back there. Linesman just watching. Kavanagh and Liptrop just enjoying the scenery at the moment. And certainly Olsen coming back with some big rights there. And then he gets the takedown as well. So that at that stage, 2-0. Breakaway here for... Last week because you really were called into action. Yeah, last weekend was really big. Um... Uh, contest for me against London there. I had a couple fights and um, Eric Carnes, a NHL proven heavyweight. And it was a good opportunity for me to uh, get to see, you know, that talent and uh, how strong he is and how uh, good of a fighter he really was. Looking forward to a quieter week. Half wins possession, but the Steelers bring it forward. Tessier getting booed by the home fans after walking out on this club last season. It's dumped in. And Johnny Phillips, John Boy Phillips, here we go, Ryan Schmier, Ryan Schmier and Brent Cloutier, first time on the ice together, this was predictable, we knew this one was coming, two heavyweights, they fought before in North America, and 6,500 fans looking for the start of it, Ryan Schmier standing still, Cloutier looking to get the first advantage from position Cloutier comes in Ryan Schmier throwing Cloutier throwing they're both throwing it's toe-to-toe -to -toe. Ryan Schmier getting the better shots away at the moment they're both still throwing two big guys Cloutier goes down and Ryan Schmier wins round one for the GMB Nottingham Panthers well that was always going to happen wasn't it Gary well they want to go again they're just being kept apart uh, it was a good little tussle both guys getting the punches in it looks like they want to go again. Does Ryan Smith want to keep going? No, he's shouting to the Nottingham crowd. Uh, that's round one. Uh, both sides getting the punches in. Both players, should I say, uh, getting the punches in. Nickerson lets one go. Rebound out in front. Steelers, though, do a pretty decent job and there's a bit of pushing and shoving. Everybody involved. Nickerson steps in. Ian Fitzgerald get together. Are they going to be dancing tonight? They continue to talk. Here we go, gloves are off, at least one glove is off. Okay, two gloves off, the referee step back. And we've got a major league heavyweight tilt. Big bombs by Nickerson, he's dropped. Absolutely hammered. He landed a big one on Fitzgerald, and Fitzgerald got one back. Look at this, two big shots by Nickerson. Catches him with the uppercut there. And then Fitzgerald throws a short jab. There you go, right behind the ear. Two very, very big boys. Steelers will send this one in. It's cleared away by Benedict. Oh, one by Lloyd.
And David Clark's in there. He's not backing down. Paul Moran's there ready to strut his stuff. Or do you now? Tony Hand doesn't know which one of the two set twos to go to. Or do you? Is corralled by Dion Darling. Dion Darling's not going to let the big NHL official heavyweight do any damage to his younger, smaller players. And here we go now. Dion Darling's throwing them. There's been a problem with the Edinburgh Capital shirts. They're not tied down. Or do you though? Has to have his tied down if he chooses to fight. His shirt's coming off now, so that should be an extra penalty for him. Dion Darling's got him. It's always difficult to find a play when the gear comes out. For that reason, there's nothing to hang on to. Oh, Dion Darling's found something to hang on to. A Duya's throat. Well, that's unfair when a guy doesn't have his shirt tied down. Hopefully the referee will spot that, but perhaps not. Dion Darling doing his job. Looking after his teammates.
stepping up for the uh, Bison. Here's Jeremy Cornish. We'll see Corny tonight. And he's going against McAllister, the big tough guy from the NHL. Two out-and-out heavyweights. Corny got a bit of a, a cut there. Look worse than it was, says Ryan Aldridge. Expecting Nielsen to be so uh, so eager to get some physical things going? Uh, no, but he seems to be. It's, it's good to see. I mean, he's trying to get his team going as well. He's on the road here, and these two look as if they're going to talk here. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, watch out. That's Brian McGrath and Eric Nielsen lining up with each other. As Nicky Porrick goes for the faceoff. National Ice Center waiting for uh, some fists to be exchanged. Oh, oh, here we go. They really want to go at this one now. It's Eric Nielsen versus Brian McGradden. He knew it was going to happen as both guys grabbed the jerseys. Trying to get an arm free there to exchange some punches. McGradden on the offensive end so far. Eric Nielsen hanging in there as number 13, big Brian McGradden, trying to throw them in. Eric Nielsen trying to engage something. Now Brian McGradden, he's got some momentum here. Oh, wow. Eric Nielsen using that left hand. Brian McGrattan with a big right. And what about, ladies and gentlemen? That was definitely entertaining to watch. Two tough customers there. The Brian McGrattan salute, ladies and gentlemen.
Oxford Arena. They have met in the Cup since then, a 2-2 tie in the Sky Dome. So the Steelers were unbeaten against the Blaze this season. Early action was a bout of fisticuffs. Here they want to go, don't they? You can see the words are being said. And Jernick and Colt King, here they're set to go. It is King with the first ones with his right. Jernick comes back then with some rights and left. Then Jernick's jersey goes over his head. So King gets some rights, some uppercuts as well. He would have holding on from both sides and Junik tries to get going and he does and probably can't see but gets some rights in but then those big bombs with the left from King he's certainly getting the upper hand there trying to just really get the punches away is Junik and certainly Colt King getting the better of the punches Junik fighting with the best of them in the Elite League proving that he really is a good fighter Colt King at the moment I would say the heavyweight champion of the Elite League proving very tough indeed anyway no the penalty on the play and it's against the GMB Nottingham Panther. It's room in the door. And Brett Cloutier, two genuine ex NHL heavyweights. Hey, hey, got, sets his hands. You got Cloutier, who was the heavyweight champion of the league last year, so this should be interesting. Listen to the crowd roar. Cloutier's got the big bomb. Nadeau gets in. Nadeau's thrown the only punch to land so far and takes Cloutier down. Yeah, I think. Uh, Clute's won that one, one. yeah, he got a Clute's couple got there, knocked in. them to his feet. And Clute won the first one. I think the belt still here at the moment. If you're in trouble with your accounting systems, call Solutions for Accounting. Not to get to award winning Sage Business Partner. scored 36 seconds into their first power play of the game they haven't scored on any of the subsequent four times they've had the man advantage and we're gonna get a fight straight from the face-off it's Gagnon and Fitzgerald this should be a good one Gagnon landed some really heavy ones and Fitzgerald has got himself back up and he continues to have a go and the officials decide they want to stop it I think Gagnon might have been cut here. Great tilt by two big guys. That one, it looked like they talked about it at, at the face-off. It may have been a retaliation for Gagnon here. Fitzgerald absorbs one right on the chin. Oh but it looks my, like he look cut at that Gagnon one. with a beauty to cut him open. Hopefully we'll get a replay on it, but you can see both guys taking a couple of good hard punches that would have probably put most of us back on the floor. Well, one from Gagnon, I think very nearly did put Fitzgerald down. He just about hung on. And then he came back with a blow that must have sliced across. Here we go. You watch the tilt. We'll see if we can see it where, where he gets cut. If it's right here in the first one, but they're definitely right there. I think that was the one right there. It's the, short, just it's the little short right, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the one just before Fitzgerald gets nailed on the chin. He absolutely haymakers won it and splits Gagnon open. The Zamboni is doing its best down there. It looks from our vantage point, and we're a long way away from that particular part of the ice, that the majority of it appears to have been cleared away, but I don't know if anything else was dripped.
Chips it forward. Boxel's going to meet him at the end boards. And here we're going to go. Dropping the gloves are Cam Jansen and Keith. Finally, they grab hold of their each other's jerseys. And they're going to just exchange haymakers. Cam Jansen with a couple of lefties there. Short range punches. And now he lands a right one. Adam Keith trying to retaliate. Both of the men swinging. And an uppercut by Keith, and then goes with that roundhouse. Cam Jansen on the retaliation. Face off. It's going to happen after this as Cam Jansen still got a couple of hits left in the tank. And still going at it, those two. Like a marathon, this is. They still are Cam Jansen. Still sending in those rights. Keep forced in a more defensive position. As those two go in front of Murphy and they're going to call that enough for that fight. Cam Jansen, you can see blood on his right fist. And that was some bout, wasn't it, Shane? Oh yeah, counts for sure, heavy in the sleeve. in the slot, 3-2, the Coventry Blades win. So now to the handshakes, and this is where things get interesting. You'll see, just in the far side of your picture, Ben Olsen and Francis. That's where it starts, where well, Devon Didiamiti goes in, and here starts a tussle. The two of them go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and this is a good old scrap. Two players sticking up for each other. Things were to follow after this, but they are going through the punches. There's some big punches there by Olsen with his right. Paul Thompson, you see in the background, the Coventry coach screaming at the officials, making his point there. And this fight continues. They're looking tired now because it's been a long scrap. Now off goes Didi Amiti, but you see there in the background, Beabra shouting. He comes over and gets involved once more. Francis too, and then Didi Amiti. And you saw match penalties for Francis, and also another one for Beabrea and Ben Olsen too, for an incident with a spectator. But this is what some of the people involved thought about it. Matt Man, Paul Staniforth, Ian McDonald tries to make some room. Bernier and Panna. It's got to go now, it's got to go. They're both standing there. Yeah, let's go. That's what we're waiting for. Panna won't let go of the shirt. Bernier won't drop the gloves. And now Panna drops them. Center ice. The play went from one goal line to the other goal line. And Alex Panna has forced Bernier into dropping the gloves. Panna wants to get something going for his team in this one. Bernier's big and heavy looking. Neither's really throw. Oh, Bernier gets a oh, oh there's a huge big fight. haymaker. Bernier's rocking from that one. Oh, he's hurt he landed now. the first one, and Penner puts him down. A clear win for Alex Penier. Penner, Weapon X. Cross your arms in the air, son. You won that one. There's a man on the outside. Oh, uh, well, that was <laughs> uncalled for. Yeah. 
McMorrow straight in there and yeah. took the, the penalty right away. No doubt about it. Yeah. And now he's, he's complaining and wants to fight somebody. <laughs> Really, I mean, the, the Giants were just starting to come out of a, a period of very heavy pressure and they found themselves taking a, another penalty and facing another power play. It's like a great save by Murphy, another great save by Murphy. And, uh, well, there's a big scrum at Morrow in there. At Morrow yeah. wanting a fight. And uh, nothing happened. Nobody dropped a stick. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to go with McMorrow. He's in the center circle, banging his stick in frustration, but... Nobody's going to fight. Oh, Suez is having a little dance now. Who's he got? McMorrow still wants some action. Oh, oh he's got him. Well, Brad Groff is taking on uh, McMorrow, and I'll let you go, Gary. Well, it, it's been a long time coming, but Voth... Oh, finally... look, there's a battle oh, going on, on the bench. On the bench, we've got... A... Everybody steaming in on the bench. Voth and McMorrow go in the middle. Voth on top at the moment, throwing right hooks. But a hair pulling going on there, is it? A shirt pulling. Down the ball. Well, I'm, I'm not sure McMorrow landed too many punches there, but he certainly put his man on the ice. <laughs> well, on, on the sideline, it was Cook battling along the bench, and there's was a brawl going on on the bench and uh, it was Cook who has has got his shirt virtually off and helmet off and he was in the middle of that brawl yeah, McMorrow uh, skates into the box lapping up the applause from the crowd looking at somebody else in the box now three penalties against the Giants and two against Cardiff so if they have a bench clearing ball and everybody gets a penalty Who's out there playing? McMorrow posing in classic Rockies. Short-handed situations as Manzano gets wrecked there by Brad Voth. And I just wonder whether this is coming. Cornish skates by Voth. Takes a deflection again. Here is Voth in there. Just has a little touch and those two are going to go. Here they go then, it's Voth against Cornish, and Voth throws the big right to get started, it's right and left, good left from Cornish, Cornish throwing good punches here, Voth, such a big man, and Cornish loses some of his equipment as they hang on, this is a good scrap, Cornish having a good tilt, he's pinned on the net now, Voth just trying to get a hand in there to throw some rights, Linesman will now leap in, well that one's been brewing for about 13 or 14 minutes, and Jeremy Cornish, well, he kisses the badge of the Sheffield Steelers. He puts his fingers up to the crowd. Voff goes towards the penalty box. Under quality, uh, under pressure. to play it back the way. Kyle Watson on the turn. Here we go, McGrattan versus Rosehill. After the turn, they'll just serve a two minute penalty each for roughing. Both men laying in the punches. Hard to see who's winning this one. McGrattan going for the jersey again. He ducks at the right time. He's got Rosehill in virtually a headlock now. if this was going to come and there it is a bit of grappling going on now a bit of hugging involved but now Rosehill's taking his helmet off the officials are involved
Penner and Mike Hoffman are on the ice together. Well, you got Penner, the new tough guy for the Nottingham Panthers, and he wants to, he said he's tough and he wants to fight, and right now he's gonna fight for his fans, and, and here we go. And in Dundee, the Sheriff Sean McMorrow will be watching. Penner in black, Hoffman, the American League killer in green. Leads with the left, Hoffman then with the right. Penner tries a jab, Hoffman throws a big right over the top. Penner leads with the right, Hoffman with a couple of rights of his own. The right from Penner. Hoffman probably looks just a bit in charge. He's got Penner and he throws a bomb over the top. Penner pops his head back out, two tough guys. Penner throws a couple of rights. Now he throws one to the body. They're not gonna do too much damage. All over rights across the top from Penner. Hoffman had the early. Ah, Hoffman had the early and the Penner come great back. He tied him up and started throwing lefts. Hey, two big heavyweights going toe to toe. I'll give that one a draw right now. Carlson brings it back, drops the collar, goes back to Belak, who drives it in the play. Stuck in behind the net. Calder, first shot of the game, and John Cullen will get his legs in the way of that one. So Pyatt rotates around for the Coventry plays. As in we have our first lot of action for the night. If John Craighead will square up against Pyatt. Hey, first time that they see Craighead go down here. As Pyatt will remove his helmet. The two heavyweights going at it. Craighead will get the better of this one, I think. Big trip teeing up. First bit of action we've seen. As Pyatt will throw his case across, and the Devils have seen a lot of that. Well, what a way to start it, Eddie. Obviously, the Devils got to come on and play physical. Craighead and Pyatt. No better way, I think, to kick things off than to let the Coventry players know that the Devils are here for business tonight. Calder picks that up. Over to Carlson. Ripple. Well, it's livening up as Andre Pyatt's back out of the box and he throws it around. That's Craighead and Pyatt. They'll go at it again here. Two big boys, the second dance of the evening. Only 10 minutes into this game. Bring in one strong character. Well, not much in that one. As Clyde will try to claim his first victory of the night. He makes his way to the box. Well, interesting here to have a look down at the referee as Craig and Empire to put in the box, but. Not sure what the call is here. Didn't seem to be enough uh, for me, Eddie, to throw both these guys out of the game. He's looking to try and get the play going again. Matt Toe and Canton having words there. It'll get a little bit too close to each other, and Canton going for a change. It's getting a little bit niggly towards the end of the second period, and that looks like it's added on. Coming over to the third, Matt Nickerson and Clutch. Look at the half words here. And they're right, going to drop the clutch. Nickerson and clutch at center ice. Clutch, just a couple of jabs there coming in from the left. And Nickerson with a big righty there. Clutch getting back into it again. Nickerson's got a good hold of him, as does Clutch. An uppercut coming in from Matt Nickerson. A couple of uppercuts from Garrett Clutch. The helmet's off now for Clutch. This is a big fight from big heavyweights. And Garrett Clutch gets. A couple of jabs at the back of the helmet, and he thinks he's won the dig, but that might not be it all over. It's not the way you do things, is that, and the code is, is uh, of a couple of heavyweights there, but that could be possibly round two. Yeah, you don't celebrate like that, no matter what happens, and, and especially in a fight like that, I, I don't, I don't think he won that fight. It was pretty, pretty much a draw, I think. And uh, celebrating like that, especially when you're not at home, I mean. Uh, that's, that's not what you want to do, and uh, I think that's their only tough guy in that team. And we have a couple guys who, are, who, who could throw him, so I don't think that's a smart move on their, on his part at all. Thank you. 
Lapine has a, a little go as well. That one also doesn't find Peter Hirsch or the back of the net just wide as Ross Venus gets wiped out by Guillaume Lapine. Yernick will go over. They're going to fight. Here we go. Sure enough, Lapine gets a few in. Oh, that's a big uppercut by Lapine and that dropped Yernick. Oh, that one hurt. Let's put the replay on. There's the big hit, wiping out Venus and they always knew that they were going to fight after this one. And it's all Lapine. That big uppercut just completely floored. Brian Yannick. This one comes across for Kevin Phillips. Oh! And a penalty upcoming against Kevin Westgarth. And Emerson against Westgarth. They'll go at centre ice. Couple of lefts from Emerson. Westgarth with a good right. But a couple of body shots there. Emerson has lost his helmet. A left there from Westgarth and another one landed. Two big boys going at it. They'll continue to tussle. Westgarth can't get his arm free or right from Emerson. Both guys will be tiring now. Another right from Emerson. Westgarth will get his left arm around him looking to uh, get a return. Punch in. The linesman not stepping in. They're still letting them go. He needs to get his and that's off. them done. Good job. They give each other a pat. And Riley Emerson lifting his bench. 
Kevin Westcroft, a tough customer, answering there. And yeah. Riley Emerson doing a good job for his team, getting a bit of life into the Caps now. Caps struggling to create a, a zone, but Cal Jones had to react quick there. That was up high and awkward for him. Oh, heavy, heavy hit up against the post. And it's Smith who, it's like there, Smith and Emerson here now. Left hand jab, right hand hook. But Emerson, he hits the ground early, a little slip there from Smith. Oh, that was a dirty hit from behind there by Emerson. And Smith comes in and stands up for him. Moves ring out, heavy load there. I thought that was a very dirty hit from behind. Yeah, I think Haywood might be hurt on this one. Great well, job by Smith getting in there, though. He was quick to respond, wasn't he? That was yeah. a very heavy hit there up the board. Very heavy. I mean, Emerson's a big, big boy, and you get crunched from behind like that. And you see Hayward there, uh, still struggling. Yeah. It's a shame that he's been playing so well yeah. so far in this game, but he seriously winded up there. Well, there we have it. I didn't see that coming at all, but Wiley Emerson finds himself taking an early shower. Wiley Emerson thrown out the game. Did you see that coming, Zach? I know it's been one of those things, it's hard to call these kind of things, but... Uh, I'm not surprised. It was helmets down, gloves off early on, as Cornish v Nadir came back to the box office for another spectacular showdown. He was one of the guys when the Steelers announced that he was going to be their net-minded from playing previously. My immediate reaction was, uh-oh, because uh, Debian will be offside and there's going to be a fight. Fitzgerald, throw it all, and a good couple of bombs going in. This is a real turn of toe scrap. Both guys, Garrett Klotz has answered the bell here. He's getting the better of this one. Zach Fitzgerald gets his arm free. Oh boy, oh boy, this is one for the fight fans. At the back of the play, both guys looking a little tired. And that's what they're paid to do. Boy, oh boy, that was entertaining. And that's, I'm sorry, but what Garrett Cox needs to do there. Yeah, absolutely. He's got to come in and cause it. Start lighting a fire under the rest of the bench. And by taking on Zach Fitzgerald, he's there. Uh, oh, he's all blooded up. Blood yeah. One of the eyes, I and think. That, that's clearly a response from last night with the, the incident with Brian Stewart. The two of them have clearly had words and when they finally found themselves on the ice together not on a, a special team shift yeah, I wonder if we can chop that one down and stick it on in the uh, intermission Penalty calls against the Giants gave Newcastle a chance to get one goal back towards the end of the period during a five-on-three power play. And then another of the Vipers' heavyweights, Andre Payet, decided to have another go at Skihar. But once again, the Giants man not only got the best of him, but also escaped with a two-minute penalty when Newcastle were hoping he'd be thrown out of the game. The second period... 1-0 against the Cardiff Devils side, struggling to win on the road. Well, Saturday night at the NIC is also fight night, and Weapon X, as they call him, Alex Penner's in town. Justin Sawyer is this week's opponent. We'll see two of the league's heavyweights going toe for toe. Last week, of course, it was Hoffman. And Penner was just getting warmed up. He got the sheriff the night after. Sawyer though, holding his own, throwing some bombs of his own. Big right hand across the top, but Penner hits back. Not afraid to go for the body shot as well, Penner, but he's just throwing everything that comes in his direction. Two tough men doing the toughest job in hockey and getting the fans going. And Sawyer trying to get his Cardiff Devils team going as well. How many times as Weapon X comes off the ice have we said that the Devils need to find some form on the road? We're underway. 
and straight away Chris Frank and Matt Nicholson about to finish the business they started at the end of the second period. Both players meeting in the middle, the gloves are off. It's about to begin. Waiting in that first punch. Who's going to be first? Frank goes in first, Nicholson a couple of punches. Both players going out in the middle here. The referee's just standing back, letting them get on with it. And shot pulling there, Nicholson getting some punches in. The referees have intervened. Both players salute the fans. Good entertainment early in the third period there. Obviously getting that, that simmering feud between the two of them out of the way. Well, the Panthers fans missed with a couple of good scraps at the end of the night. Guy Lapine was all too much for him as well. And Chris Frank got involved. Frank's helmet's off. Lapine's helmet's going to come off now. Frank gets it off. And then they go to war on each other. Two tough, strong men. You wouldn't want to do this for a living, would you, folks? Good to watch. We're not good to do. But Chris Frank, what a great job Frank did on Lapine. He thought so as well. We all thought so. We were standing up cheering him. As he left the ice, and the Steelers had a new hero in Chris Frank. It wasn't soft for Cardiff. Goulet, a good playmaker, brought in this year. Now the gloves are off. This was expected. Here we go. Brad Voth going at it, toe to toe. Well, new signing Jeremy Cornish was expected to get himself into this game early, trying to make a mark. 172 minutes in penalties last year for the London Racers. He's got his hands full with Brad Both. Both is six foot five, and he's no stranger to the penalty box either. This is a good match between these two guys. Both a couple of big boys out there. Both that right hand over the top, couple of short lefts. Little boxing commentary for you here. Both takes a short one there. He's not going to be happy with. Cornish just brought into the Newcastle lineup from London. This was expected, trying to find his feet, trying to make his mark, trying to be accepted by the crowd. That isn't going to take long. Panthers, so Sarkis enters with speed. Oh, he got checked. And Brown doesn't like it whatsoever. That was an open eye set. Oh, Brian McGrattan's going for him. A lot of friction here between Vandermeer and Brian McGrattan. Oh, and fists are flying here. The gloves are off, and Brian McGrath and Vandermeer, they're going to dance. Just throwing right-handers are the two right in front of the Panthers bench. Whoa, what a bout. They're going at it. They've got so much adrenaline going through their veins right now. Brian McGrath and sticking up for his teammate there. And then finally, he'll just bear hug him. Into the plexiglass. And I'll tell you what, folks, National Ice Center is buzzing right now. Brian McGrattan salutes Nottingham. Danny Meyer's stick is ripped out of his hands and thrown down the ice. Here we go, Stefishan. Here we go. The heavyweight, Stefishan. And Ryan Schmier, 17.33 to go. Stefishan comes in and throws a bomb. 
And Ryan Schmidt stands up and throws him back. Yeah. And then they go down. Good job. Both men went on it there. Both throwing him. Well, Ryan Schmier's shirt is uh, ripped. The fans chant loser at Stefishan. You be the judge, Davey. Stefishan. He had 356 PIMS last year in 98 games, 228 of them with a team called the Rocky Mountain Rage. Oh, was, that a, was that a draw or Schmeezy yeah. ended up on top? Did he yeah. get the nod? Yeah, just gets a draw there. I think they both threw a few punches. You know, for the Vipers' home game against Coventry, a friendly which at times seemed anything but. Wilson, though, says while winning is the goal, fighting does have a role in the sport as well as being a crowd pleaser the whole game of hockey is is a physical game and it's just been contact with Kevin Reiter oh that looked painful Reiter went right over on his knee or was it his ankle watch the whole of Reiter's body weight just falls down on his knee and that's going to see the end of Kevin Reiter after the Bison have made it 2-2 as well so the backup goaltender for the Bison goes in Bison pressure and they find this winner hold on a second Steffersham and Cornish and retribution is going to be taken. Well, it's supposed to be being taken by Jeremy Cornish for what's happened to Kevin Reiter. But instead, Steffersham, who hasn't got the great height advantage, well, he, his right hand was like a machine gun, wasn't it? And Steffersham wins that. Yeah, happened last time as Cam Jansen finishes a body check on Matt Nickerson. As I was saying, the prologue happened last time as uh, the two exchanged. And Cam Jansen's ready to go. And it is Keith he's going to dance with. They grab each other's jerseys. Keep throwing in right-handers. Cam Jansen trying to retaliate. And you, you, were, you had a feeling this was going to happen. Cam Jansen gets Keith briefly on his knees, who stands up. The two are still going at it. Plenty of gas in the tank. Both of these guys. Helmet comes off from Keith. Both have had a couple punches that connected. What about the endurance of these two athletes? Cam Jansen tried to throw an uppercut there. That was a great fight there by both guys. Cam Jansen getting the crowd fired up here. That went the distance. All stuff forward for the Devils. He looks in front. He finds Batch. Batch tries to go back across there for Ben Tavoli. I believe Batch already has one point tonight. He was looking for his second. And now Doty. And we got a fight down here. We got Doty and Mark Louie. They're going. Doty throwing right. Louie throwing left. Two big boys here. Good job here by Doty trying to get the fans going. Both exchanging punches here. Louie has no helmet. Doty gets the takedown. And that brings the Panthers fan to their feet. Great job there by Doty, trying to get the boys going here.
option was to follow ramifications coming from Bruce's hit on Colt King up in Brayhead only two weeks ago these two had to fight they did fight it was over pretty quickly as well Carl Bruce is one hell of a tough man which just shows you how tough Colt King is he's not beating players in the elite league at the moment he's demolishing them and add Carl Bruce to the long list Colt King a straightforward victory he heads back to the penalty box Unfortunately for Carl Bruce, not the same for him. He headed back to the Brayhead clan dressing room. And Bruce was to play no further part in the game between the Steelers and the clan. 48 to go in the first period. Chevry on the face-off. And uh, here we go. I'll let you go on that one, Simon. Well, I mean, I think that's what it's all about. Bergen just got nailed by Jason Rushton. You know, Bergen, I think, wanted that more than Jason Rushton did. There's a bit of a, a difference in height between Rushton and uh, Bergen. And he, uh, the first punch absolutely floored him. Great punch. So think, tell me this rule about you have to have your your shirt. Uh, there's a tag on the shirt at the back of it. Uh, and the tag has to be down. If, it, if the shirt comes off, they get an extra two minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct or illegal equipment. Um, so, you know, but... Uh, it's, um, I think Mr. Bergen might think twice about trying to fight Jason Rushton again. They're having a bit of a, a discussion in the penalty box. It's not. Maybe they're going to go, are they? Maybe they just drop the puck and let's go. Bergen want to try and get one back. Oh, let's have a look. Out there with Dan Tessier, I think Morgan. we're going to go, are we in? We're going to go again. Well, they're setting it up in the center ice. I'll it's let you carry on with the conversation well, I mean he's a big the two big lads Jason Rushton has done well so far this season but he's come into the games but it's hard to say which way it's going to go you know the crowd are all on their feet here and and uh, it's, it brings a wee bit of excitement back into it hopefully it's not a mismatch Bergen's got a couple of good rights in there Rushton's holding on and you know he'll get a couple going here he's got a strong left hand Bergen's doing his best to try and get back at him from the, the first fight they had in the first period but it certainly isn't over yet. You know, there, oh, there's a great right by Rushton. Bergen, oh, there's both of them down. Oh, no, they're still going. Fair play to them. Fair play to them. Rushton let them get back up. There's a lot of big punches thrown there. That's a, that, I mean, that could be a, a game changer. You know, the fair play to them. They give it each other a pat in the back. That's what Warriors are all about, Wayne. You know, that's what Warriors are all about. Fair play to Bergen. They took their lids off. You know, Bergen was wearing a, uh, the half visor. He took his lid off. Jason Rushton for his head off. Five on five or five, it'll be five on five. They'll get five minutes each for it, and uh, you never know, there might be rounds. There's a man in the net, Fitzgerald will complain. Here we go, Fitzgerald and Jansen, and a pair of them are trying to trade here. Fitzgerald trying to spark his team, but at six nil, is it going to be too little, too late for the Steelers? But they're still going. Trying to get the helmets off and the pair of them hanging on and that'll do it. Two very tough men.
Andre Payette versus Ryan Schmier. The wild thing in Riello against Ryan Schmier. Payette going with the left jab to start off, and Schmier throws the big bomb of a right, another bomb of a right. Payette's one over the top, another over the top. Payette the more aggressive in the fight, Schmier coming back, and Payette's trying to land a couple more, loses his balance. The Panthers cheer, the Panthers fans cheer. But, but I don't think Schmier caught Payette, I think Payette just lost balance there. Good job by Andre Payette. Ron Schmier says it was me that won that one. Well, you know what? Even fight. And uh, it ain't over. We're going to see that a lot more. Right now, Schmier is giving it the big. What's Schmier doing down there? Well, that, that to me, Schmier is saying he's got the heavyweight champion belt right now. And this is what I don't like. Clutch out for the Blaze. Quinnell and Clutch looking to drop the gloves and here we go. Big Clutch and Mike Quinnell. Is that Jim Van Der Meer? My apologies. Jim. It's been Jim Van Der Meer throwing punches. He gets rid of the helmet now. This is a big scrap from two big bodies. Jim Van Der Meer looking to try and get the helmet off for Clutch and he catches him with a right. A couple of rights coming in from Clutch. Another right from Jim Van Der Meer. The two linesmen really settling themselves out of the way here. A couple of big rights from big, big bodies. Van der Meer and Klotz with a couple of under uppercuts there. Van der Meer again switches from his left to his right. That's going to do it. And that's a good start. And two big combatants there for both teams. I think it's about honours even there, Johnny. Yeah, Simon, two big bodies going out early in this game. Klotz coming down the board. Jim Van der Meer taking him out hard. And Klotz didn't like it, returning it with a slash. And it all kicked off from there. Play from Adam Keith. There's a chance to puck breaks for Klotz again there, and there's going to be a penalty in the play for interference as Klotz and Adam Keith collide, and the gloves are off. Adam Keith and guard Klotz heading back to center ice. Big right there from Klotz, but Adam Kiefer responds with the right. Elbow pads are off now. Jabbing with the left here from Kiefer. Big right coming in from Klotz. Adam Keith giving up a few inches here to guard Klotz, but the captain won't back down from anybody. The helmet's off for Clutch Knight. A little bit of a scramble there. Another right coming over the top from Adam Keefe. An uppercut from Clutch. The linemen certainly don't want to step in here. And hanging things up. The captain with the natural toss of the helmet. And he thinks he's going down the tunnel here, but he still has time to go. And as he's going for repairs. But Adam Keefe's been a few months nice as Adam Keefe had a scrap in the SSC Arena. Wait for the signal here for Brian Stewart to head towards the bench and he's getting the... It's a nice play by Phillips, up the face off. Phillips shot and a goal! And now Gagnon and Fitzgerald are going to go in front of the net! Gagnon was looking for it there but I don't think Fitzgerald wanted it and then Phillips scored. And they kind of got tangled up. And I think they're probably going to end up going here now as the lines get out of the way. Fitzgerald and Gagnon. Fitzgerald and Gagnon throwing bombs. Left Fitzgerald, right Gagnon. Toe to toe. Two toughest guys in the league. Big bombs from both boys here. Starting to get tired. Gagnon switches to the left. Gagnon now with the left. What a tilt. Heavyweight battle there, respect to both boys. And a goal there from Phillips too, so... On the restart, Jason Rushton and Jeremy Corrish decided it was time to become friends again.
home side. It's the undisputed heavyweight of the Elite League against the new boy, Colt King, who is going to be the toughest of these. Here they go, Lapine. The Colt King starts the better. Lapine the then comes back strong. But as you can see, King finishes very strong. And Lapine goes down on his knees. But King has the better of that fight. And I think even most Compass fans would admit that Colt King had the better of that one. Great. I'm going to
bit of old time hockey for you now as it's gloves down, helmets off as Jeremy Cornish and Roman Nadeau decide it's time to dance. I three. There's also an assist for Mark Richardson. He adds an assist to his goal earlier. And the Sheffield Steelers find themselves in a position they haven't been in throughout this Elite League season. And we're going to have a punch up. Fitzgerald wants to get the crowd going. And it's a rematch from last night. Lewis and Fitzgerald. We still wait for the first punch to really land. And there comes the left from Fitzgerald, one that lands and one that misses over the top. And Lewis swings a right. Fitzgerald with the overhand and then the uppercut. And now they're starting to land. Lewis is trying to hold on. And Lewis gets the takedown. Looks as though he might have hit his head on the ice and oh, he's been cut open. Oh, that's nasty. Oh, that is a nasty fall. I'm not sure that it was a punch. I think it's where his head hits the ice. When he wrestles down Fitzgerald. And it was Fitzgerald that landed the biggest bombs in that one. And you can see there that that is really, really nasty. And there's going to be a cleanup operation that needs to take place. And we hope that Mark Lewis is, is going to be okay. Forehead first onto the ice. Steelers doctors to work on him right away. And Rushton and Payette are uh, eyeing up again. And uh, Payette and Rushton are going to go. It's over to our fight night commentator. It's Mr. Wayne Hardman. Well, they've gone to the center ice and uh, setting up for a contest, both feeling each other out. Payette number nine in black. And the Giants, Rushton, seem to be uh, on the uh, downswing here taking a lot of blows I don't say he, he could uh, win this one although he's just put his man down and the fans love it he waves to the crowd Pike gets up said what was that all about oh it was one left hook that put Pike out of his backside <laughs> Payette and Rushton are going to go again. That's over to Wynn Hardman. Yes, well, Payette's got him in a bear hug, and Rushton is down on the ice, and the referees have rescued 
Rushton because he's flat on his backside. And Pyatt seemed to have got the better of him. I don't know whether that was a wrestling match or whether it was a boxing match, but anyway, we'll see who gets the uh, two plus five plus 10 in this one. Pyatt goes to the bench, uh, the penalty box, I might say. And uh, Jason Rushton slams the door. Season. Indeed, he's very much a fan favourite as Dustin Cameron's hook by Jamie Millam. There's uh, no call, though. Fans didn't like that at all, Paul. That could have been a hooking call there. Indeed, Cameron didn't like it either. He uh, gave the linesman a look. Didier Matthew battling with Olsen behind the net. Played away now. They're going to battle all night. They're both going to be tired and, bu bumps, and bumps and bruises all night long for those two guys. And here we here go. Didier Matthew drops him. Wrestling with Ben Olsen. Linesmen are already in. Olsen says get away. And now, oh, that's a big uppercut from Olsen. Throws another one to Diametti. Doesn't look like he fancies this one much. Lands a punch now. Olsen's just such a, such a big man. I mean, he's towering over Devin Diametti. Landing uppercuts and a, and a few haymakers there. But I'll give Diametti some credit there. It's very hard to hold on to a big man like that. And he's taking a little bit of a pounding there from Ben Olsen. He's doing well, Diametti. He's standing up. He's taking some big shots here. Throws one now. Olsen lands another one. Didiometti tries to get his arm free. They're still going. This is a good tilt, these two. Olsen lands one. Didiometti lands a good one. Crowd is absolutely into this one, Paul. This one looks like it could go for a while. Didiometti looks like he's had enough. Nope, he's still going. Not a person seat, and everyone's on their feet here at the Sky Dome. Jersey Jobs, they're still going. This could be fight of the season already between Olsen and Didiometti. He's taking a lot of punches, but landing his own, the Cardiff Devil. And that was a great bout and, there, Aaron. And there's Devin Didiometti again. Just getting in the face of everybody, and even as he's the fight is over, the referees have separated. He's still talking to Benny Olsen. Be Benny, <laughs> Benny, telling the crowd he appreciates the uh, the support. Oh, and there's going to be a oh. fight here at center ice. Garrett Klotz and Eric Nielsen, that came out of nowhere. And they get together early. Oh, and a big right hand from Klotz catches Nielsen off balance. Yep. Big build up for not a lot. But a big right hook from Garrett Klotz caught Nielsen off balance as we see the whole thing again. Good swing from Nielsen over the top. He's off balance. Yeah. One to the back of the head from Klotz. Sees him the victor in that tussle. The offside's called. And here we go. What have we got here? It is the big one. Cam Janssen and Zach Fitzgerald, they're throwing big rights. Centre right. Oh, that's a huge left from Fitzgerald. Now they get tied up. Trying to get the helmets off. Oh, big right from Janssen. These two are absolutely giving it an energy sapping scrap. Bit of blood flowing as well. Fitzgerald tries to switch up and Janssen lands another left. They're still going. This is some scrap center ice. Encouragement in the background from Colin Eddy. And a tap on the hip of appreciation. Two warriors. Look at this. 
Jansen trying to get his helmet back on. Fitz, he carried on throwing. Play going on, Bilak and Dewal squared up there. I think the crowd wanted it, Bilak wanted it. And there they go, Dewal and Bilak, a few fisticuffs. I don't think Dewal's too interested, he's more interested in the verbals, I think. Bilak wanted a bit of physical stuff. Goff will have a go at him, no, I don't think he minds, there we go, that's the fight the fans wanted. This is what's been brewing for nearly two periods. Voth and Bilak takes off Bilak's helmet. Can they get any punches away though? Well, the gloves coming off from Voth. He's getting a few punches in. They're firing against that plexi. The helmet's in the face. The tables have turned a bit. Bilak standing up to the big man. Voth using his height. Get the punches going in. Really hard punches, were they? I, yeah. You'd want your money back if you paid for this fight, wouldn't you? Seriously. But Boff protecting his teammate. That's what he's there for. Didn't look too bothered about it in the end. And down went for the shot. Well, you know, you'd like to say on two on ones, a good pass. It builds a lot of team morale, but uh, he went for the sure thing, the shot on goal. Well, when you're back, here we go, here we go. Folks, Ryan Schmeer versus Jeremy Cornish. This is a proper scrap. This is a proper heavyweight battle between these two players. Cornish in white and orange. You can see that Schmeer's going to lead with the left, and they both throw opposite arms there. The right of Schmeer, the left of Cornish. Both are connecting. Who's connecting most? It's hard to tell. But these are two tough guys doing the toughest job in, job in hockey. Schmeer's had to fight a lot recently, throws a big left there, throws another left over the top, Cornish comes back with a left of his own, Cornish aims with a great left there, hits with another left there, they're and now they're two up. tied buddies. They're getting tired and they tie up right now, a good toe-to-toe -to -toe scrap there, Dave. Two, uh, two big men making a statement, Cornish kissing the steel of his shirt, and again, they just sit there, they knew right off the jaw that they were going to do this. They're going to do this before the play gets going. They both have a lungs full of air. They take off the mitts, take off the helmets, and go at it like men. And this is what proper scrapping's all about, Nick, isn't it? It is. You know what? You, you, no cheap shots. We're two tough guys. Let's go at it good and proper. And Schmier obviously saying, you know, I, I want to try and step up to my, step up to the plate here to the, get the, my Panthers teammates going. And uh, a good toe-to-toe -to -toe fight. Good I'm, I'm thoroughly happy. <laughs> Would I'm not going to go see any boxing over the weekend now. Would you say that that was an even fight? I think uh, you know, Schmier threw some think, big lefts early doors. Cornish came back in the latter stages. I think Cornish had some big heavy shots in there. Schmier had a lot of shots. Um, it, but uh, I'd say it's definitely a draw.
Mystery. Rewind the tape, see who done it. Oh, here we go. We're going to go. Olsen's decided he has got some. From opposite ends of the rink. Olsen against Lapin. Crowd are on their feet. Squaring off. Panthers with the 1-0 lead. The Blaze looking for a spark. Olsen stepped up. Both men wait. Olsen does his hair. Now they connect. Gilepin with the bombs. Olsen gets one back. Gilepin still throwing as he goes down. Now Olsen gets a few in with Gilepin wrapped around his midriff. Lapin holds on. Olsen just letting him go into the side. Gilepin still holding on. And in the end, has the strength to pull him on the floor. And Olsen still wants to go as the linesmen step back in. I think we may well see part two of that later. There'll be another round to that one. Oh, especially as he's uh, showboating to the crowd. Gilepin slipped as he was trying to throw a bomb, went down. Olsen, to be fair to him, took advantage of it. But will he have the you-know-what to go again?
And in comes Dotty. Brace dekes outside. Lovely play from Brace. Has his head up, looks to get it across the ice. It's a nice play, Hammerlinen. And the gloves are dropped. We have another fight here now. And there wasn't much in that here. It was just all punches raining down from Ganyan. Well, it was off the play. And I didn't really see much about that one there, Craig. Is it Jacob Dotty? And he's bleeding pretty heavily from the mouth there. Did you see how that one started there, Craig? It was well behind the play. I did not at all, to be honest with you. Next thing I knew, the two men, the gloves went flying up in the air. Enjoying life. Into the boards, a crowd like that one, and here they come. They're going to like this an awful lot more. Here's Mars with a shot just wide. Koenig unable to get hold of that. Oh, and down in front of us here, Darling and Payet have gone at it off the play. The chance for Panthers to take the lead was there, but the action was going on just down in front of us. Payet gets the takedown on Darling. Darling so long, the tough guy of the league. Well, Payet may be the new boy, but he's taught Darling something there. So Morgan, 20 seconds to... And Lacroix go for this one. Oh, and Spencer takes down Doucette. So he loves on behind the play. And Smith is out, and he's not happy with Spencer. And he's going to challenge him, and they're going to have a punch-up. Now the punches start to come. Smith, the aggressor so far. Now a couple of lefts from Spencer. Oh, and that one caught Smith. Now that one has kind of died down a little bit. Not quite the heavyweight rumble, it may have been. But it all started out with the hit behind the play. Spencer, who shows his shirt to A block. And he's going to go back to the dressing room. Because it's near enough the end of the first period, 2.20. I'm sure he'll be back, I don't think he has been ejected. With the British goalie. How about this for a start? <clears throat> Manchester versus Basingstoke, two very tough men. Cornish in the red and white, sorry, Cornish in the black, Cloutier in the red and white. And two of the league's genuine heavyweights battle it out. Shirt off Jeremy Cornish, still Brett Cloutier wants a drop of it, not a... Chris Higgins has just been steamrolled there by Patrick Cordolo and Adam Cape and Patrick Cordolo going to tie. Cordolo throwing the first couple of rights there, but giving up a massive amount of size and weight as the captain, Adam Cape, is here right in our screens. Cordolo, look at the size of that guy, he's just an absolute monster. Holding off the cap, he gets a right in there. A couple of rights from Bordalo. And you've got to give the big man credit. A little top there from appreciation. But the captain, Adam Keith, not happy with the big hit coming in on Chris Higgins. Possible borderline charging, no call on the play. And both guys will sit for a minimum of five minutes each. Yeah, we'll take a look at it again here. The puck goes to the corner. Uh, it's a borderline charge there. A referee didn't see it that way. Um, but a solid hit nonetheless, and Adam Keefe jumps up to defend his teammate there, and give him credit, he's, uh, he's given up a few pounds on uh, a fight there with Bordalo. Well, I think you've got to give Adam Keefe a massive amount of credit there for stepping up for his teammate, but he's been doing that for so long now here, Johnny. Yeah. You know, he'll not back down from anybody, I mean... The Steelers needed a reaction, they got one. Chris Frank challenging Guy Lapine. Lapine was more than willing and the two tough men went toe to toe Lapine standing up for his team Frank trying to get some momentum going Lapine the height weight and reach advantage but Frank with that big heart throwing everything he got into Lapine he had every one of us standing up cheering him on you could tell exactly what Frank was trying to do he was trying to get some emotion into the building some life into the Steelers they were 2 nil down what could he do to help his cause Late in the second period, and Newcastle defenceman Lickett Anderson pushes Kyle Bruce into netminder Andrew Werner, and Chris McAllister follows Kyle Bruce into the corner.
In the 47th minute, Brett Cloutier gives an invitation to fight to Chris McAllister, but it's Andre Payet who steps up and accepts. Consistency, not just being consistently poor. <laughs> you just want them to be consistent within a game so that after five, ten minutes, you know what's happening. Here we go. Skihar and Ryan Schmier. First time we've seen the big guy go. Skihar wants to get something going for the Belfast Giants. They're close, but nothing coming for them. <laughs> Ryan Schmier leans in and starts unloading. Ryan Schmier leans back and, oh, this is one-sided. This could get ugly. This could get ugly. Skihar wanted it, and Ryan Schmier was happy to oblige. Oh, Ryan Schmier is still on top, and he's making sure Skihar goes down. Skihar doesn't want to go down underneath, and they're still standing. It could be a round two. Ding, ding! It's over. That was one-sided. That was one-sided. That was like taking candy off a baby, Gary. Schmier really really did do well
The no fans contest. have wanted that since the start of the season. We all knew what Ryan was here for. And I think Skihar asked for that. Shmir last week. and I getting involved, Derek Walsh and I getting involved, and yeah, it doesn't look as if there's too many uh, friends out there on the ice between White and Teal, Dean Smith blowing the whistle and taking at least one to the penalty box, Nickerson and Seskon have got a hold of each other, there seems to be an awful lot of white jerseys on the ice, Seskon doesn't want to drop the gloves to him at the minute. There's one each being sent to the penalty box. And here we go, Matt Nickerson. And Craig Seskon throwing bombs. Nickerson with the right. Seskon with the right. Coming back at him. Seskon's got a hold of his shirt there. Nickerson trying to get the right score again. The big man. And the whole fan base are on their feet here in the SSA arena. Seskon got a good grip. A couple of lefts coming forward. Nickerson with the right. The helmet still on. A couple of rib shots there from Nickerson. You know, the big, big blows from these two big boys. Nickerson, again, catch him. Seskon right in the side of the head with that one. This one's long from over just yet. No, oh, maybe it's not. And they're both guys are happy with everything. And his first fight of the evening, Matt Nickerson. Quite happy to stand up for his teammates once again. And an even battle. With 13.33 to go in this first, second period, sorry Johnny. With it's played by him up to Bettridge. And we got a fight behind the play, Farina and Gagnon. Gagnon throwing and Farina throwing left, great scrap we got going here. Gagnon with the right, Farina left, toe to toe. Gagnon loses his helmet. Both guys going blow for blow, Gagnon switches to the left. Gagnon gets tied up in his jersey. Fight of the season so far on the NIC. The shot Lehman will deal with that. Steve Munn holds up. Now Jerry McCormick, she doesn't need to be asked twice. Stay fishing. There we go, Cornish. It's gonna go. Adam Stephenson and Cornish. And Cornish goes down early doors. Now he gets up and he's ready to go. They're throwing rights and lefts. He only took one early in that fight. And Stephenson seems to have done pretty well on him so far. Cornish trying to get loose again. That might be them done in this game. He didn't quite catch it right after that, but Stelfish had done his bit for his team. Sundays couldn't be better, could it? Opening face-off, we have a fight. Who is it? It's Keith. it's Olsen. Three seconds, the clock stops and they go at it. In the white is Keith. in the blue is Olsen. Getting their hands free, getting their shoulder pads free and everything. And they're now grappling. Olsen goes with the takedown. Keith goes round on top and the linesmen step in. Both of them waving to the crowd. Bit of pantomime villain going on once more from both players. So that was a great start to the game. To game. Now we see another fight. Keith against Olsen. It is there again. Round two for them. This one's pretty decent as well. Some rights from both of them. Uppercuts and undercuts from the two of them. Big long scrap. 
goes on for a good while. But that was Olsen's third fight. So he's out of the game. So three players lost, thrown out. Goal for the Nottingham Panthers. And a great move by himself. A solo goal. A second goal when the GMB Panthers colours. Great finish. All oh, a piece that straight out of oh, the no box. Way. Just a good hit. Oh, here we go. Sladox in for a spank. Sladok is in for a spank, I guarantee it. Sladok now realises he might have made a mistake. Oh, goes down in one, bless him. Gila Pins like stands up and says, for goodness sake. Well, he what just stepped it? straight out of the box, didn't he? Why would he be thrown out for a hit straight out of the box? I don't think he should be going to the locker room, for goodness sake. I think they're calling him back from the locker room. I hope they're calling him back from the locker room. I mean, Silverthorne's been helped from the ice. It was a big hit. He got hurt, but... No one wishes him ill. 7.57 to go, second period. Panthers lead by two goals to nil. Gila playing who hits like a train. First shot there, nice shot by Myers. Here we go. Here we go, it's all been set up for the fight here. Here we go, Ruben, Payet, both heavyweights. I think it was one of them fights where not one punch got landed. <laughs> but uh, they both went at it and that's what the job is and that's what they went to do. Well, I'd get Sal out the way now and get on with the hockey. <laughs> So it's a 3-1 hockey game in the first period. But this game was not without incident. Here you see Olsen on Keith on the boards. It spills over in front of the Coventry net and they start to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, not for the first time this season. But they've forgotten to do something. Look, they pause, have a word, and the helmets come off. And then the fight intensifies. Big bombs being landed 
from both players. This is not the last fight of the night. They go on for a good amount of time. And that is the first scrap of the night. An entertaining one at that. And the Odyssey is alive, alive. Oh, Coventry's second goal. In the quarter final hat. Rosehill, well brought down from him, cut out by Seskin. 37 versus 32. Farina goes in with a hit on Rosehill. And there it is, it's broken out between the two players. It's Jay Rosehill raining down some punches on Farina. Farina not really getting a chance to respond here. That happened hell of a quickly. Rosehill still raining down the punches. That looks to have beaten Farina. That looks like the one that's done him. Both men are spent. I think it's safe to say Rosehill takes that one. And both men will sit for five minutes for fighting. The fans on their feet in appreciation of what they've just witnessed. Salters comes on. He's having words with Keith straight off the bat. And here we go. Keith and Salters. Salters asked him for it. Keith are obliged. Salter takes him centre ice, right. looking for a spark for the GMB Panthers, trailing by two goals to nil. Salters ragdolls him literally, and then starts throwing them. Big haymakers. Shirt comes up. Salters throws six punches, and Keith goes down. As one side of the fight, as you'll see. We wanted a spark, we got a bonfire.
to Wilson. Wilson tries to tip that into the corner. Picked up by Demaray. Comes around the top of the circle. Throws it towards Tyler Plant. And that's an easy enough save there from Tyler Plant. Fitzgerald and Adam Keith. Two big bodies. Fitzgerald and Adam Keith. Adam Keith not going to stand for any hassle being given in to James Demaray. Coming together and both of them hit the ice. A couple of big bombs thrown there, Johnny. Yeah, absolutely. That's a couple of times tonight that uh, Desmarais has been getting, you know, bumped around by the uh, the Steelers' D-man there. Adam Keith stepping in there, letting me know that uh, he's not going to stand for that. He's giving away a few inches in in uh, height to Zach Fitzgerald, but that's why he's the leader. That's why he's the captain of the Stenline Belfast Giants, and in the 250th appearance for the men in teal. Yeah, it didn't look like Fitzgerald uh, was, was really that interested in, in having a fight there, whether it was. You know, the timing of it in the game or not, he, he uh, you know. Might be an instigator penalty. Plays into the zone, there was a delayed offside for a moment. That one takes a bounce off the glass and there was a hit behind the play and Fitzgerald and Paquette. And Fitzgerald climbs in. And Paquette trying to hold on and then get a right hand out of his own. Fitzgerald's trying to get the right hand over the top. Paquette's trying to respond. The uppercut response. Yeah, a little bit of a cutter coming up on Paquette. And the uh, right from Paquette and the right. as well, so. Fischl still letting him go. Paquette is giving it plenty. Both players looking a little bit tired now in this one, but still they go and still Fitzgerald trying to land that big blow. And Fitzgerald will claim victory in that one, and Paquette, you can see the damage done on the face. Yeah, and a good, uh, good response by uh, by both players on that one. So uh, always tough, a <laughs> tough job to do is is get in there. But uh, but Fitzgerald uh, took obsession uh, obsession to the uh, to the hit that, uh, that that came in on him and, and went straight after Paquette. So. Uh, you know, good job. Like I said, the intensity was starting to heat up just before that, uh, and, and we see that that's going to carry on now. That might just be what this game needs to really kick it into life. time unsuccessful however as the GMB Nottingham Panthers find themselves a little bit hemmed in their zone and here we go Cam Jansen is in a yard sale and he's gonna sell punches but so is Zach Fitzgerald just in an adrenaline filled bout to start off and these two are no strangers 55 and 28 for the respective teams Zach Fisher loses his bucket Cam Jansen just trying to swing in haymakers in there on that unprotected head of Zach Fischel. He's trying to counter. And looks like they're running out of steam slowly. That'll do it. And National Ice Center faithful going absolutely berserk after that fight. And uh, Madge, you could say that was a Great play on. In a fight can't change the momentum of a game. Do you see Carl Lewis there in the Carl Lewis in the corner? Here comes McIver. It's an even fight, six of one, half a dozen of the other. But McIver is sending a message to the Coventry Blaze that the Cardiff Devils at 3-0 down just won't accept that. The incident that you're seeing now is going to lead to quite a lengthy power play time for the Cardiff Devils. A lot talked about Lickett Anderson before here. 
Well, first face off. Matt Keith comes away with the puck for the climb. Ooh. Fitzgerald and Nickerson are getting it out of the way. Right at the beginning. Fletcher and Tracy came on, calling out Matt Nickerson. The, drop, the gloves are dropped. These two giant men are about to go at it in the first period here at Brayhead Arena. Fitzy and Matt Nickerson. Fish comes on overhand, overhand, right in. Fitzgerald has it. Nickerson down on his knees. Nickerson is down. He comes back up, comes into a bear hug. Fitzgerald had him down on his knees twice. And Nickerson's back up. Oh my God, they both go down. Fitzgerald takes a massive front to make a defensive here. What an excellent, excellent battle. And what? the start of this. What a way to an inch and return from suspension for Zach Fitzgerald straight into it. But Matt Nickerson, I said Nickerson was up for it tonight. And there he was, right there, the two men going at it. Fitzgerald had him on the ropes on a couple of occasions. Slipped in the end, it looks as though Nickerson may have got the upper hand, but still, five minutes each for these guys. What a way to get this game started. At all. So unfair to the kid. Madur and Schmidt are all set to go. Ryan Schmidt needs to get something going. NHL tough guy against Nottingham tough guy. Ryan Schmidt, center ice. Madur throws the first punch. Ryan Schmidt gets hold of him. Well, he hasn't hit him anywhere yet. Well, as the commentary fans chant Schmier's easy, it. it's Ryan Schmidt throwing the punches, stripping the shirt off. And I hope he gets the extra two minutes for not wearing the tie down. And now Ryan Schmier is looking to finish the job. And then he says, well, I can't do anything now. Well, that's Ryan Schmier's by a mile. Schmier, Schmier won in, in, my, in my esteem, hands down. What do you think, David? That's two big slingers going at it there. And this and a good look there for the modern Panthers. But Pinch was there to make the better. And here we go, Zach Fitzgerald and Cam Jansen once again after a hit. Cam loses his helmet as they two just exchange haymakers. And this is a spicy one, folks. As those two get tangled up by the dasher. Cam Jansen locking and loading, hitting one there to side of Zach Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald on the delay. Zach Fitzgerald looking to exchange. Let's go. His hold there and he is dropped. Pushed down by Cam Jansen and that's the second bout of the evening. Back and cue it, re to the bout of fisticuffs. It takes some time to get going. This time Jernick, who seems to fight every week, is going with Keith. Keith gets some rights to start the fight off. Jernick starts to come back. They get a bit tangled on the boards and Jernick tries to get his hands free. Then they start doing a bit of rocking and to and fro. And then Jernick does get the arm free and starts to go with his right one or two good ones there then back comes some more rights with Keith and Jernick with his rights as well Jernick starts to go with his left Keith comes over the top and this one is nearly over the linesmen step in two tough men going some naughty punches there from Keith just as his back is turned Jernick then seems to give him a bit of a slap Keith then plays up to the Sky Dome crowd Jernick then wants more words with Keith that's an entertaining fight, and they certainly went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. So 2-0. Especially as we were only five minutes into that second period. Tim Spencer, though, up to the plate against Healy. Six foot four, Spencer. Isn't very often the smaller guy. Six foot seven, Healy. They weigh each other up. And then here he comes. Two awfully strong, tough competitors and tough men. Pretty even to here, but then, bang, that right by Spencer, that knocks Healy, and then the take down. I think we'll give that one to Spencer on points, they both tap each other as if to say, well done.
And they're going to go. De bien. Ryan McGradden. High octane stuff here at the National Ice Center. They finally grab each other in the jerseys. And De bien is going to try to throw with that right. Just throwing them in there is De bien. Brian McGradden coming right back him in waves. Those two just trying to... There's a couple of short jabs trying to weather the storm a little bit. And then Brian McGrattan throwing some haymakers too. Debian goes on the knee. Comes right back. They're still going at it. But finally the linesmen come in. And uh, they'll cut that one a little shorter than it could have been.